This video takes a look at variable sampling. The goal of the video is to understand how variable sampling results are evaluated. Variable sampling is, is associated with substantive testing, which is actually testing dollar amounts. There's another sampling called attribute sampling, and that is dealing with tester controls. The goal of variable sampling is to generate evidence about whether or not there are misstatements in recorded account balances. As an example of variable sampling, we'll be taking a look at confirmation of accounts receivable. Let's just assume that there is a population of $50 million, and that population of $50 million is the gross amount of accounts receivable, and it is comprised of 17,000 separate accounts. So the big N, capital N, represents the population. Let's assume that we took a sample of 200. Little n represents sample size. So we went ahead and sent out 200 confirmations. We're going to make this simple and assume that all 200 confirmations came back. We didn't have to do anything with follow-ups and that type of thing. So we're just going to keep it simple. And also assume that prior to sending out the confirmations, we just decided that the tolerable misstatement was two and a half million dollars tolerable misstatement is the materiality threshold associated with variable sampling. It's how much misstatement we can have within the account before we say the account is misstated. In this example we're going to assume that the account of 50 million dollars can be misstated by plus or minus 2.5 million dollars. Let's assume that the 200 confirmations came back at the book value of the sample, the book value of those 200 equaled $600,000. So we sampled $600,000 of the $50 million. And let's assume that we took a look at the confirmations that came back and we think the value of those 200 confirmations is $576,000. We're going to call that the audit value of the sample. In other words, we sent out 200 and there were some mistakes and let's assume also that we've already gone through and these mistakes are in fact um, are verified and therefore we think the population should be recorded at $276,000. So that indicates a misstatement of $24,000 in our sample of 200. In other words, the book value is overstated by $24,000. We took a look at a sample of 200, and now what we have to do is extrapolate the sample results to the entire balance in AR. So we have to extrapolate the $600,000, the, the book value of the sample, to the $50 million. Another way you can look at it is we took a sample of 200, and we have to extrapolate extrapolate the results to the 17,000 accounts. So to do this, let's do a simple ratio analysis. So what we're going to do is say the ratio of our sample is equivalent to the ratio of the entire AR balance of $50 million. So the audit value of our sample size is going to be divided by the book value of the sample size. So again, this is based on our sample of 200. We think the 200 has a value of 576,000. The client has recorded 600,000. This comes out to 0.96 or 96%. So a way of looking at this is that the account is okay 96% or you can say it's off by 4%. So in fact, looking at this, it's overstated by 4%. What we want to do is take our ratio from the sample and apply it to the ratio for the entire population. So the audit value of a sample divided by the book value of the sample is going to be equal to our estimate, which is the audit value of the entire population, compared to the recorded value of the entire population, which is the book value of the population. 
since we determined that from the sample of 200 that the client is 96% correct and 4% incorrect then what we want to do is apply that to the entire population so again if our ratio is 96% I can take 96% of the 50 million dollars and that will give me what I think the entire population should be in other words I think that the entire population is valued at 48 million dollars which is 96% of the 50 million again that 96.96 was the ratio from the sample and we believe that the ratio from the sample will also be applicable to the entire population. And if we think the entire population should be $48 million and the recorded value of the accounts receivable is $50 million, then that would indicate an overstatement of $2 million for the entire balance. The difference between this $50 million recorded and what we think it is, the $48 million. Another way to get that $2 million is simply say, I've got that $50 million balance, and I think it's off by 4%. It's overstated by 4%. So 4% of that $50 million is also equal to $2 million. That $2 million is called the projected misstatement. So that projected misstatement is the difference from our sample, which is $24,000, and that has been projected or extrapolated to the entire population. So even though our sample indicated a difference of 24,000, that 24,000 has been projected or extrapolated to the whole population and therefore we think that the population AR is misstated by two million dollars. There are multiple ways of calculating that projected misstatement but in what we're trying to do here is just to keep things simple and just say that our sample, or based on our sample, we were able to develop a projected misstatement of $2 million. Now let's take a look at the parameters. The population of AR is $50 million. We took a sample of 200. Based on the extrapolation of the sample results of the entire population, we computed the projected misstatement to be $2 million and prior to the sample we determined that the tolerable misstatement is $2.5 million. We're also going to add another assumption here that the allowance for sampling risk is $1 million. When we take a sample we don't think that the sample results are going to be perfect. We take a sample of 200 this out of 17,000 accounts and we estimate that the account of the balance of AR is off by $2 million. We don't think it's going to be off by exactly $2 million. We're going to give ourselves a cushion. We're going to give ourselves a cushion that it might be a little bit more than $2 million. It might be a little bit less than $2 million. But we think it's going to be off by about $2 million. And that cushion right there is called the allowance for sampling risk. And we're going to see this graphically. And also, the allowance for sampling risk can be computed as can be the sample size, but in both cases here, this is simply going to be given so we can see how this works. I have a bell curve, and we're going to use the bell curve as an example of our population distribution. However, most account balances do not follow a bell curve. They're highly skewed, but we're going to make this, we're going to keep this example simple. So we're going to start off with our projected misstatement. This again is from our sample and it's been extrapolated from our sample results to the entire population and we think that the account is off by about two million bucks. But we don't think it's going to be off by exactly two million so we're going to give ourselves a cushion which that allowance for sampling risk. So I'm going to give myself a cushion of a million dollars um, plus or minus. So if I take that projected misstatement of two million and I add to that my cushion, the allowance of sampling risk of 1 million, I get a UML. UML is the upper misstatement limit. And that upper misstatement limit is $3 million. Again, projected misstatement plus my cushion is the upper misstatement limit. 
that upper misstatement limit is an upper bound. And we'll talk about this more in a minute. And let's just assume that the upper tail is 5%. We could establish it at 1% or at 10% or something different, but the default is in auditing is generally 5%. I'm going to also take that cushion and subtract $1 million from the projected misstatement. Because again, that projected misstatement is my best guess. I don't think it's perfect. I'm going to give myself a cushion of $1 million on either side. When I take the projected misstatement minus $1 million, my allowance for sampling risk, I get a lower bound. That lower bound is called my lower misstatement limit. And in this case, $2 million minus $1 million gives me $1 million. And like we did before, we're just going to assume that the lower tail is 5%. So given this, we can say that we're 90% confident that the true but unknown amount of misstatement is between $1 million and $3 million inclusive, meaning it could be $1 million, it could be $3 million, or any number in between. Could a misstatement be overstated? Absolutely. Could an account be understated? Absolutely. But on the CPA exam, to be consistent with attribute sampling, and there is a sister video um, of this video called Attribute Sampling, the CPA exam assumes that all of the misstatements are overstatements. And as a result, there are, we can kind of ignore the lower tail. So in real life, I want to stress this, in real life there can be understatements. We are taking a look at this to kind of see how variable sampling works and we're doing this and we're going to be looking at this parallel to attribute sampling where the lower bound does not matter. So if we ignore the lower bound then what happens is we're saying that we're 95% confident that the true but unknown amount of misstatement is $3 million or less. And this is again looking at a 5% at a tail. I've cleared this off so we've got a nice clean graph. And I am now going to be taking a look at this total misstatement of $2.5 million. That $2.5 million falls in between the projected misstatement and the upper misstatement limit. In fact, what we're saying is we think that the amount of misstatement may be as high as $3 million. That's what our upper bound is. We think the misstatement is as high as $3 million. We can only tolerate up to $2.5 million in misstatement. So my decision rule is if the upper misstatement limit is more than I can tolerate, then I reject. And that's what's happening in this case. Our conclusion is we, we reject. The account is not fairly stated because we can only tolerate $2.5 million. We think it could be as high as $3 million. In a nutshell, if the total misstatement is inside, inside that upper bound, then it is reject. If it is equal to or outside the upper bound, then the account is considered to be fairly stated because this decision would, excuse me, this decision would work. That Thomas statement would be more than the upper bound. And we'll see an example of that right now. So we've changed the Thomas statement to say $4 million. In that case, the Thomas statement of $4 million is beyond the upper bound. I can tolerate up to $4 million in misstatement. I think the misstatement may be as high as $3 million. I'm okay, which means the account is fairly stated. I'm going to accept the account. And it follows that decision rule because the upper misstatement is less than or equal to the total misstatement.